time for Perf Bites. What the f*** is Perf Bites? The fourth square meal of the day. Don't bogart the Perf Bites. Fuck waffles. Add nutritional value to your brain. Perf Bites. Whatever. Hello, amigos, and uh, welcome to this new episode of Pervites, where we are back to try to explain, give you introductions, and revisit all those fun performance topics that our friends James and Mark had already gone through. Some of them have modernized, some of them have changed, so we will have lots of conversations. And as usual, um, well, not as usual, this is kind of new, but uh, I have with me my amigo Henrik Rext. Hello, Henrik, how are you? Very good, very good. Uh, and um, and just going to add, we want to bring the new way of handling the performance stuff because obviously uh, time has uh, provided a lot of uh, new innovations on the way we deliver performance in general. So I think it's it makes sense for us to uh, to yeah, basically uh, present a new angle on the way we deliver uh, our our project. Yeah, and speaking of changes, um, you kind of uh, pulled a homer and did a very good um, segue into what we're going to be talking about because today's topic has gone through some transformations, some changes that uh, are really important that we start to delve in and uh, clarify with these changes that have occurred. And it's, well, as you said, modernity, right? Things keep evolving. We are an IT. This is a very um dynamic area that we're playing on right completely and in fact the, the topic that we're going to talk today uh we or we sort of mentioned uh quickly during our first uh episode related to test plan and uh we touched it touched it just briefly <laughs> on the requirement side um so uh could you tell us a bit more on this yeah we barely touched it respectfully and um, but we wanted to give more chance today to give uh, a deeper dive on what are we going to be talking. The topic um, today is SLs, uh, would say. Uh, some would say, what are those SLAs that you mentioned or SLIs, SLOs? What's uh, all this mess that you're talking about? And in general, we're going to be talking and um, discussing uh, SL, which is service levels, just mm, what uh, they are about, how do they impact performance, what are these new changes, right? Because as we already um, gave a little bit of a spoiler, we're going to talk about those changes, those differences, and what started to happen, right? Because uh, things are very different from at least when I started as a performer uh, in the terms of SLs. Um, things have changed quite a bit. Uh, how about you, Henrik? Yeah, I think... Uh... If I remember well, uh, the first notion that appeared in the performance world was the service level agreement. And I think, uh, yeah, we didn't automate uh, our tests at that time. We were pretty much doing the manual analysis and reporting and everything, but we had to take those requirements to um, explicitly present them in our product, our preferred choice product, and have a feedback on, on how were their requirements based on the test. And I think from my, my when I looked at, at those requirements, how they were managed in, uh, in the performance tools, uh, they basically were copying a sort of the feature that was available a long time ago in, in the functional testing space. Uh, because in functional testing space, it makes sense. Uh, you have a test case. Uh, you, it could either pass or it could either fail. But uh, so you you don't have to, to spend two hours to analyze and say, hey, did it fail or did it pass? No, the feature doesn't work, so it's failed. Uh, in load testing, more complicated. Uh, we There's a combination of different angles. We, we touched base it, plus, uh, but in fact, uh, on the other episode as well. But so, uh, so implementing those SLA in our product, uh, and we, we were... It was very difficult, to be honest, uh, and especially now where everyone is just talking about CI, CD, uh, utilize, putting load and performance testing part of your pipeline. Uh, obviously, you want to you be more efficient, uh, to be more quicker uh, by applying this automation. It makes complete sense for a process. 
But still, if you look around around you uh, in various accounts on various customers, with various projects, you can see that um, there is an automation there, but it's there's still some manual validation. And especially in the performance world, where we know that it's complicated to make a, a good analysis and 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 have a, the right feedback to the project, say, hey, it's failed. You should not go to the next stage of your project. And um, and I think the SLs, uh, the uh, SLI and the SLO, I think is the perfect tooling to allow us to automate and at least to identify if you're positive. If it's negative, of course, we need to die. I mean, diagnose and understand why it failed. But but still, we need to have some, a, a mechanism that will decide if it's really green and and be confident on the green that comes out of automation. Yeah, and uh, definitely, as you very well say, I remember my first introduction, the SL something. It was just SLA. And uh, it was, and it still is a little bit, I would say, um, objective, well, not so objective, it's kind of subjective, and that gave uh, an opening to many misinterpretations, many mistakes, errors, and mostly they were applied to just response times on some of the tools that we were familiar with, that we grew up with, and um, at least that I got formed on. And this, this uh, as you said, these thresholds to say it's right, it's wrong, something is good, and and they prop they they propagated this uh, set of um, mispractices where and and you and I have heard it almost all of of our audience most probably have heard yeah everything must be under three seconds and no that's not how things work that's not how these parameters should be applied on some just basic performance tests on low tests and many other types of testing it is important that we have. Nowadays, in these continuous uh, days, uh, better thresholds, better indicators of what is a good measurement of performance and a bad measurement. And we don't have it only in a single uh, item like response times. Uh, that was what we used to think of in the past, right? So it's an, an, it's an evolution. Uh, better specification. I believe it was uh, our friends at Google who brought up these differences, right? You know better the story? Yeah, clearly. I mean, it's uh, so it's uh, ten years ago, or even more. Uh, Google implemented a, a methodology, a, a, a process uh, called site reliability engineering. I mean, everyone talks about it as, as a big buzz world. SREs, it's the big big stuff. I think just to to summarize it very quickly for those who never heard about the term terminology SRE. Um, for me, DevOps. Uh, was a way of being more aligned with your customer requirements. So you want to deliver uh, very often to releases. So then you get a feedback from the customer and then you can still involve that and make sure that you always provide good use experience or a good product in the hands of your users. And also it's, you can always have the ability to improve yourself. And also it, it's DevOps was a way also to drive innovation. But if you look around it, it's great, but it it's more like a phys- philosophy. It's like more like culture. Uh, you, you don't have precise process. You have to make your own process at the end when you are fully DevOps. Uh, of course, there's the notion of continuous de- development, continuous testing, continuous continuous everything, in fact. And but the the I think that the SRE. Uh, was a real way of putting toolings for DevOps uh, to basically track uh, how good your products are uh, by always focus on your customers. Uh, and and that, that's why uh, they introduced this terminology of SLI, so service level indicators, and SLO. So I think we it's time now, I think, that we jump in those two topics, the SLI and then the SLO. Yeah, definitely the um, initial, um, yeah, on those days it was a jungle. You were just trying to make whatever you could with that information, with those characteristics. And um, we having these new, uh, more specifics help us a lot. Helps us to not to just call generic measurements, but uh, 
uh, a phrase that I love, um, um, calling a spade a spade, not a gardening tool. We have a specific set of um, measurements, some specific set of thresholds and set uh, of agreements that we can work with. But as you will mention, let's start with the easiest. The easiest and I would say most straightforward, uh, the SLI, which is um, an acronym for Service Level Indicator, uh, which as the, say, ne, ne, the name says, it indicates. What does it indicate? Is just pointing directions or? <laughs> <laughs> so basically we all know uh, we are, we have, did we have started our journey to DevOps, which means I have a solution that collects events, logs, traces, anything, so observability. I need it because if I don't have the right view and understanding on how my systems behaves or, or running, I cannot improve myself. So that was the first block that you have to put in your IT environment, have the right observability on your environment. Once you have that, then those systems is collecting metrics, which are indicators. So at the end, you can define which indicators will allow you to measure how you good uh, and how happy your customers are. So usually you fo you, fo you try to identify indicate indicators that will measure the customer satisfactions or the customer front uh, you, uh, front <laughs> the, the, any metrics that will help allow you to understand if your users are having a good experience on your application. And uh, yeah, it's very important, the service level indicator, as uh, you were very well mentioning, it is a measurement for, it's a measurement. Um, all those numbers, all those values that you can extract, I've seen multiple different uh, values that you can get, like um, user experience, response time, and even values that are uh, peculiar, like user frustration, the rage clicks when a user uh, of course, clicks and nothing happens in the system. Well, clicking a thousand times more, most probably will fix it. And uh, some of those are measurements that we can get from the system. And not only that, we can, all the measurements that we're used uh, to CPU percentages, uh, RAM consumption, network bandwidth uh, used. But in general, most of the SLIs will have those two components. The measurement, a number, and the time frame, if it's at a given moment in time or a time interval, if you have an average or something like that, that will be your SLI. And and also one one important thing. So we at, we are for, uh, during this episode, we, we know, we're going to define those terms, SLI and SLO. But keep in mind that there is a very uh, small differentiation between the SLI that you can use for your Quality gates for QA purposes, and the one you're going to use more for production. Um, because if you use it for production, SLI is a metric that's true, but it needs to be a ratio. So let's take an example. You, we mentioned about response times. So we're focusing about the user. So let's say I have a transaction add to cart, which is because I have an e commerce website. So the user will, will add product on the cart, and I know that this transaction is very important because it's, it takes forever. Maybe I can lose that customer. So, and then uh, I don't want to use averages because uh, I'm more confident on percentile, 99, for example. And so let's say that I want to get a ratio out of this metric, so the percentile 99 of the transaction add to cart. So how do you get a ratio out of that? Very simple. The idea, you have to measure the number of good events divided by the number of total events multiplied by 100. So you will have a, a percentage. So in our case, if you want to apply a ratio on response times, it means that already I need to know what is an acceptable response time. Let's say that in my case, in my project, I say that add to cart cannot be up above two seconds. So let's say I want to count the number of requests that had the P99 under two seconds, divided by the number of requests that you have on that moment. I would say on, on, on that, you may be getting a little bit ahead on those acceptable metrics, 
But a very good point is what are reasonable metrics to have? What is um, important to measure? As you very well said, in production, you may not care for an average, but you want the 90 percentile, or you want to just quite the opposite, just catch the outstanding outliers, uh, outlier events. And that's really, really important on an SLI to get a very good threshold or period in time or measurement uh, sampling rate if you want. There are multiple characteristics that you can have on an SLI that will make it irrelevant or extremely important. And we may be talking about the same thing. Do I want to know the average of a CPU in an eight hour period? Okay, that's good. But what is the 90 percentile at intervals of 10 seconds? Do I have any spikes in between those? Those are the things that may be more important rather than just have a number. Do I care about, um, I don't know, the network bandwidth at midnight when nothing is happening, no one is using the system? That might not be a good SLI. But what if I have uh, batch processes running at midnight? Then do I care about that time? So it's very important if you have what type of aggregation um, calculation, if it's an average, if it's a summatory, if it's um, 90 percentiles, all the different things that you can do with numbers and the periods of time that are more relevant. Especially the, the period of time is very important because if you probably utilize SLIs and S, 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 SLO and so on in production, you're going to probably have a, an evaluation period that is going to be very high. So you don't usually put SLIs and SLOs in your production environment for one hour because it's going to be very complicated to calculate, to track, and so on. So usually you'd say, all right, I'm going to do for over the last week, or two weeks, 30 days, 28 days, 14, day, 40, 14 days, and then you will evaluate the your SLIs during that time frame. I would say it, it will depend as well on the type of uh, test that you are doing because let's say you have a spike test where you have to check, probably it's an hour where suddenly you have the spike when everyone is logging. So beware, this is, I would say, also very important. You need to be context sensitive on what is the situation of your load test. And as Hendrik says, sometimes you don't want to focus only on one hour or a short period of time. But if, on the other hand, you have something very specific, you can focus on it. And I think that's that's a good point. And so keep in mind, uh, it really depends on how, where you want to implement it the notion of SLI and SLO. If you use it for your testing purposes, now obviously it's going to be, uh, the time frame will be shorter. You want more statistics. Uh, it's it's not a, the same story. If you, if you just use it for production, then the story, the journey will be simpler, easier, and more focused on your customers. Things change. And uh, again, uh, as we say often, and especially in performance, there's no silver bullet solution. You need to understand what SLIs are you going to get and what will be important there. But on, on, and, and to, to gather some of those thresholds that will let you know what is good, what is bad. But I think we're getting already ahead a little bit into SLOs. It seems like we are um, eager and overexcited to start talking about them. So why don't we do a quick break and uh, then we come back and we start talking a little bit deeper on this huge beast that are the SLOs. Today's Perfights episode is brought to you by our exclusive sponsor, Flood.io. Whether you need to load test a single URL, simulate realistic user scenarios with JMeter, or execute extremely large concurrency and volumes with Gatling, Flood.io provides a simple and affordable platform for everyone. For more information, visit their website at flood.io. So now let's start with the other uh, section, which is the SLO. So survey, which you understood, SLI stands for service level indicators. So which means SLO stands for? Service level objective. Yeah. So we have now a metric that we have selected, so, or, or probably a bundle of metric, because we are not going to rely on only one metric. We have several metrics. So we have described them through the indicators. And by describing them is basically how I'm going to collect that metric. Because keep in mind that you have probably several data source. I can have a, a Prometheus, I can have Dynatrace, I can have... Their, so the SLI will be basically how I'm going to retrieve that metric. So in the case of PromQL, 
uh, sorry, in case of Prometheus, I will basically, uh, yeah, basically put my PromQL, how I'm going to retrieve the indicator I'm looking for. Once we have that, then we are going to define what is a good objective. So we will be able to help us to define the, our requirements. So it could be if you have a ratio, you're probably going to say, okay, I want to have 90% of my requests that are uh, with a person type P99 under two seconds, for example. That could be uh, an objective. So I want, only want 90% of my requests that are acceptable. Uh, or if you have decided that you want to, don't want to use a ratio because you just use it for a QA and and uh, quality gate purposes, then you could basically say, I want to just measure response times. And here you will have to define the thresholds. So what is a, a good response times? What is a bad response times? Um, and, uh, and depending on the system that you use, uh, you can obviously have more features than just the thresholds. Um, so what, what's your inputs on that? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely the, as you very well mentioned, it's a judgment uh, on these, uh, thresholds. You are defining what is good and what is bad on all the SLIs that we already defined as important for our system or our specific situation. And uh, in, in those, uh, it's very uh, specific uh, um, because we can have multiple SLIs on the same thing. We can have SLIs for the CPU in multiple uh, time periods, but uh, in the same time period, we can have, as you will mention, the average, we can have the 90 percentile, we can have maximums, we can have minimums. And, be, and on these SLIs, we're going to define what is good or what is bad for that single specific one. Because again, it could be the same uh, SLI, but a different aggregation, and it could be an average and it could be a maximum. For the CPU, we're still talking about the CPU. And maybe the average, uh, we would say, it should be in between around 50%. Let's just throw a number. We know that uh, probably it's very busy, but the maximum should not be above uh, let's say 80, 80%, because at 90, we stop receiving good metrics. Uh, we have lots of risks. So in that period of time, we don't want the maximum to reach this point. We want it on average to be in this. And that's uh, a very important uh, measurement for each SLI. And we can have several SLIs, right? Multiple. Completely. Uh, in fact, it really depends on... on, on just to, to, to add to what you just mentioned, it really depends on, on which system uh, you are going to use uh, to handle your SLI and your SLOs because there's plenty of different products out there um, just without briefly naming them. So uh, you have Captain. So Captain is an open source framework that has a quality gate component. Um, there is Noble Line that is more focusing on the production environment uh, in uh, most of the... Uh, cloud providers of the market. Now you have this notion of SLI slow. Most of the observability systems of the market as well has the notion of SLI slow, but more on the production side. Um, but just to come back, for example, for the captain. So you can define all your SLIs, your SLOs, and the way a uh, few of those products, and, and the one I'm referring is captain, has the ability to say, to give points. And I think points scoring is what I love uh, with the, with quality gates because it's help you to make an efficient uh, automation. So let's say I have a one rule, and that rule uh, is, yeah, I it's not a high priority. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna put any extra weight to that SLO. Uh, so if I don't, uh, all the metrics will be at the same level, and each metric will give you the same number of points if you reach. The target, uh, but you can also have, let's say, and it's it's the case for us when you do a lot of testing. There's obviously um, transactions that are way way more important and more critical for our business. So we want to differentiate. Let's say, add to cart. We took the example. So add to cart is really crucial for us. And let's say the contact page. Okay, I don't care if it's it's not crucial. So I'm going to put the weight that we'll have on the add to cart will be maybe three times bigger than the uh, contact details, whatever, uh, which means if add to cart is positive, I will gain more points. Um, and, and at the end of the day, uh, 
captain or other systems will give you a total number of scores based on all the objectives that you have defined. And and I would say that um, also depends on the system that you are uh, dealing with and how do you define those SLOs? Because uh, captain uses this uh, point um, validation um, structure and some others are like, you just set an SLO. Tell me if this is acceptable or not. And you, as you well mentioned, the contact page. As long as it's responsive, if it doesn't time out, I'm fine with it. But the card, I want it to respond after maximum this amount of times. And after this period of, um, uh, uh, of seconds, that, that is acceptable, that is not. And this brings us to a very key component of the SLOs. As far as I can dissect them and classify them, we have the SLOs that tell you that your given SLI should not be larger than, that should not pass this um, um, level, value, whatever. The other one is the opposite, that should uh, be larger than, that should not decrease too much, like the amount of available memory. You don't want it to go too low. And we have another one, which is very specific where it's exactly equal to. We want it to be exactly at 10, let's say an SLO around the points that you mentioned. And those three are the specifics, but you can combine them. I want my, C my CPU threshold not larger than this, but not smaller than this, because it means that probably my application stopped and it's not working anymore. So you can have a larger than, but no smaller than, and have both at the same time. Uh, hopefully the ones that are seeing us can see me doing my uh, hand gesture, putting a cap on the top and a cap uh, at the a lower level. Uh, but for our podcast, uh, audio only listeners, I'm doing those hand gestures to indicate that we have those two levels. And each one of those can be larger than, smaller than, or larger or equal, because those are also important on what is going to happen. For the ones that just give equal, I have seen as well some uh, SLOs that have these, um, as you mentioned, Henrik, it's equal to, it's good, but if it deviates, it starts uh, losing or gaining points. Uh, so I want my CPU on average at 50%. That's very good. But if it starts to go slightly, slightly higher, that indicates that probably I have a deviation, the new uh, code that was added has a problem. It's bringing up some things and details like that on a specific uh, SLI and a specific metric. But if, um, as you mentioned, there's a, an item that is super important, it's like, dude, this has to take under one second, no matter what, no points, no nothing. If this fails, you're out. And this is what we call a key SLI or key SLO. So not all the solutions handle that notion of key metric, uh, which means the notion of key metric is exactly what you explained. So if, for example, if that particular objective is not reached, then forget it. Everything is wrong. Uh, and this is very important, especially when you, when you do the automation. Um, and also it's something we didn't mention, but not all those SLI, SLO systems manage it. Uh, but you have a feature which is very used in the quality gate it's the comparison. So I have a threshold on a metric on my test on, on, on the, based on the data source where I'm collecting the metric. But I, 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 let's say I want to have response on under two seconds. But again, I don't, want to, I don't tolerate any degradations from the previous tests above, let's say, 10%. So which means, let's say, we started at 500 milliseconds. Way, we are great. We are a great team. And then every release... We're still under two seconds, but every release we add, let's say, 100 milliseconds, which is quite significant when you have an increase. If you have 500 and suddenly you, you, your response time is at 600, it's not a big deal. We are under two seconds. But still, re remain, remind yourself, the difference is 100 milliseconds, which is pretty important. You have just uh, one, one fifth of the metrics has been increased. Um, so basically, you can also make comparisons. So I, I said... I don't want, I don't tolerate any degradation of more than 10%. So which means if I increase about 100 milliseconds in my example, I will fail that objective because I have basically increased more than 10% and that was not acceptable. So both 
angles are very important. So based on thresholds, based on cooperation, and that will make your quality gate more robust and more uh, secure, I would say. I believe, uh, yeah, and we kind of uh, blazed through this or jumped it completely on the SLI uh, part, where, as you mentioned, this uh, comparison between one metric and the other, that difference in comparison, uh, what was before, what is now, it's plus one, it's minus one, is um, that difference in these two measurements, that itself can be an SLI. And you can define an SLO or a threshold on that variation, which is, as you mentioned, really important. And I have seen it, especially in continuous uh, pipelines, where if a new change that I introduce generates a deviation that is larger than this from the previous measurements, that's a problem. Probably it's, it's still in between the threshold that I said that, um, I don't know, it takes three seconds, but uh, 3.5, four is still acceptable, so I'm okay. But if previously it went from two to four, it's 100% of uh, change, a big impact, a big degradation, which of course we will stop the pipeline there and send it back and say, hey, Mr. Developer, probably you did something that is degradating or generating these problems, lift that effect or just push it back and not let the pipeline flow. And as you say, it's really, really important that we keep checking these SLOs to assure that we can let software go through and uh, reach production, or, or even when it reached it, that we have those SLOs saying, hey, in our test environment and that branch, everything said it was fine. Is it still fine in production? Oh, no, hell no, it is not. Let's push it back. Okay, rollback mechanisms and let's uh, set up everything. So that's, that's, I would say, why it is so important that we have those uh, good SLOs defined around so many things that we can uh, define them around, right? It's not just like, just five seconds is good or bad, you're out, you're um, used to be this uh, green or red uh, marks, a green check or a red cross, I remember, and some of those tools that we used to use. Nowadays, it's so much more complex, which is good. It gives us all this control, quality gates, and capabilities to say, this is good or this is bad, right? Yeah, and, and we discuss about it. We do. Everyone is talking about automation now. So if we don't have the toolings that will allow us to trust what comes out of the automation, then it doesn't make sense to start automating because running a test and then stopping the automation to wait sixty-two hours or more just to have someone looking at the results, it does. It seems quite clunky as an automation, to be honest. So I think uh, QuietGate is is the solution. And on that, I would say uh, uh, part of the differences that we have now uh, from what was um, before, we used to have just waterfall projects that were th these big ass low tests that we had to do, and that was it. And that limited us a little bit where we couldn't um, fix it or it was just push it back and or passes to production and that's it. But nowadays with continuous, we need to have these automations that run other automations, our pipeline is an automation that runs our uh, performance scripts, our performance automations, our um, APMs, all the metrics, all the monitorings, and we need to constantly be checking for them. It's not anymore just a, as I said, a green check or a red cross. We need to be constantly aware. And I, I would say on some of these environments, I've seen the SLOs evolve as well. You need It's not something that you set up once and done and gone never to look at again. Completely. Uh, it's Everything is about uh, continuous improvement, continuous testing, and the SLI and SLO is the same thing. Start, I mean, it's great to define those, but I think if you are afraid on getting started and using the SLI and the SLO, don't worry. Start small, start simple, and then improve it. Uh, keep in mind that also, we didn't mention about it, but especially in the production environment, it doesn't make sense to define objectives that are too difficult to reach. An objective needs to be reachable. It doesn't make sense to start defining objective that is, and an, an, an you will never touch those things, even if you, because maybe you want to put more pressure and be better. I agree that part, but keep in mind that you will just have alerts. You will have a lot of things that will be just unproductive. So try to define uh yeah, realistic objectives again. 
and and you and you said a key word, some of those agreements that we are going to have, which uh, takes us to the next and last element of these SL uh, little monsters that uh, have been created now that helps us on the performance. So uh, why don't we take another little break and then we get with the last one, the oldie, the SLA. Hola amigos, it is me, Leandro, aka Señor Performo, together with Perf Bites Press, announcing that by the end of June, we will start a pre-sale of my baby, finally reaching the Amazon bookstore, the Hitchhiking Guide to Load Testing Projects. A fun step-by-step -step guide, or level-by-level -level, may I say, that will guide you through your load testing adventures. More details to come soon, beware! All right, so last section of this episode today is the SLA. So what is it, Leandro? So as you very well said uh, in the previous section of the episode, it's the agreement. SLA is a service level agreement. And it's a, how to say, I, I would say it's like the mama of all the other SLs because it encapsulates them, an agreement. Um, if if I understand it well, because uh, uh, and and it's something that we will debate a little bit on this episode. Uh, to me and for what I was see, checking, it was like a contract, and a contract has multiple clauses, multiple elements uh, that must be passed, must be inside of a threshold, which is like an SLO. So an SLA is a contract that says, as you were saying earlier, Henrik what is acceptable or what is defined as unacceptable. If I uh, give you a contract for a service and tell you that uh, you need to deliver it in 0 0.00001 seconds, you will say, no, I, I don't agree to this contract because these clauses are too strict, what is realistic. And that's where you put an SLA, to me is like this universe of SLOs encapsulated in a single, um, element that gives, let's say, the end customer or the user, where the user, uh, as an example of an application of a bank, you have that expectation that will be up all the time, that uh, you will be able to complete your transactions. Let's say you're selling stocks that you will be able to sell them in time and that is not going to casually fall down when they are really, really hot to be sold. And these type of things are not talking at all about response times, any specific metrics, but are mostly, as you were saying, more user experience. Am I happy with it? I, am I complying? For, for, for me, the, the, but once you start using SLI, and if you start using SLO, then SLA is, you just only one SLA. And mm -hmm. uh, we mentioned about some systems are calculating a score and giving you a score based on your objectives. So uh, either one, uh, depending on the weight and the priority, you have different uh, number of points depending on, your, on, the, on the objective that you have uh, defined. So at the end for me is the SLA, when you come to testing, you need to define, all right, so I have applied a lot of uh, validations with the thresholds, with the thresholds and comparison, and I got a, a number of points, and now I need to define what is an acceptable, how, uh, how much points would I tolerate, and will determine uh, the right level for our system uh, when it comes to performance, for example. So it's a, uh, my release will be performant if every test that I execute, I get a score uh, above 90, for example. Uh, under 90, uh, it seems risky, so let's fail it. Or So I would definitely clearly use only one SLA because you already have made the complexity with your indicators, the objectives, and, and the others. So I think one SLA is fine, fair enough. And the SLAs, keep in mind that it's it's a legal term. It's always been a contract. Uh, if I, So I buy a, a SaaS platform uh, through uh, any SaaS vendor, then I will probably have an SLA on the availability of the platform. Uh, so you have that contract, and if the contract is not respected, then boom, uh, you you expect something something coming out of that. Yeah, I, I and and as you very well said, it's something that encapsulates a single element, multiple uh, thresholds, but it doesn't um, 
to me, it doesn't get too much into details. It says has to be good performance. Okay. Later on some other classes of that contract, we have what is good performance. Okay. That this SLO it's applied, that this SLO, this SLO, this other one. Those three at the bottom are the contact page. We're okay if it passes. We're eh, they, they should comply with some measurements, but it's not so important. The key uh, clauses of our contract in our SLA are these SLOs, as you very said, the shopping cart, that it has to be responsive, that I can sell my stocks, that I can uh, get into the site when I need to move money in the bank site or some of these things. So the SLA, it feels to me, goes more around um, that you're happy with the service, that you're happy with uh, what was provided or what you need in the environment. And this is um, defined more generic, more more uh, at a wide, um, an outlook of what is going to do the system, which I think to my feeling is something that you need to write up, that you need on contracts, you need on um, statement of works, you need uh, when you generate your system and your requirements, for uh, your epics and all the deliverables in your Kanban board, but they are not so specific. Let's say my expectation is that I don't have so much technical debt, that I my software is released in time, that I have multiple releases, all these things. But I just said generics, multiple, in time, terms that rely to happiness, but are not putting a dot uh, on exactly this means happiness, which um, define happiness, Hendrik. It's uh, <laughs> some of those terms are very objective, right? It completely. Uh, I mean, uh, happiness. I'm pretty sure that uh, you can feel, you can feel it. There are people that are living in in really difficult uh, situations, but this, they feel very happy. And other countries where they have everything, they are not so happy. So. Happiness, the terminal need of happiness is very, very difficult. To, it's, it's a perception. All that is, um, as you very well say, um, very subjective perception, I would say, because you can um, specify, and, and I loved your example. Some people can be really happy with something and some others not. If, um, I don't know, let's think of uh, some of the richest persons in the world. Um, Mr. Bezos or uh, Mr. Bill Gates, all these um, super rich people, they may not be so happy with a specific type of caviar or uh, they, they may say, oh my God, this pool, the temperature is awful. It's just, uh, I don't know, uh, 27 uh, Celsius. Not sure how much that is in Fahrenheit, but um, I need it hotter. And some other people would be like, are you kidding? It's a pool. It's freaking caviar. I don't care. It's super awesome. And it's the same with some systems where for some of them, it's really acceptable and very, very good that their processes, um, that the user only has to wait 30 seconds. Let's say a month end process where you are doing the whole company's billing process. That one, yeah, sure. It completed in 30 seconds. I'm bouncing on the walls of joy because that was incredibly fast. Some other organizations, yeah, we have to wait all night and do the um, month end closure and all those things. And it's awful. But even some other processes, as you said, on the shopping cart, if you had to uh, leave people waiting 30 seconds for the shopping cart to be updated, you won't have any sale on that side. So it's very distinctive for every different situation. That's why the SLAs can be generic but you need to specify with the SLOs what counts as happiness, as you were saying, right? It's completely. And uh, I think the 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 great thing uh, about the SLs in general um, is that most of the toolings that you have around you that to help you to define the SLIs and the SLOs and the others, you can. It basically it's, it's based on YAML or or, or description language. So. The, the great thing of YAML file, it's a text format. And if you connect it to your favorite source control, then you can track changes, which means we mentioned about it. Start small, simple, improve. And because you're you're tracking it on your source control, then you can see 
how the requirements has involved during the, the, your releases uh, and how your validation has been better or, or worse, I don't know. But at least you can track that. And I think it's great because in the past, those requirements sort of, we were basically defining in a testing product or a requirement platform. And then there was, it was very sort of more difficult for us to track the changes uh, between releases. Yeah, and um, as you were saying this, it got me thinking uh, right now, I have not pondered that, that having these SLOs under your SLA and as you keep growing your system, because of course you will start super simple with a few SLOs saying um, just hardware metrics, here are the ones that are important and uh, software metrics, here are the response times, consumption, connections to the database, yada, yada. But as you keep adding complexity on these continuous environments, your SLA will start to get fatter and larger with more SLOs. And through these mechanisms that uh, can make, let's say, SLs as code, um, like the YAMLs can allow us, and multiple other devices, you can just have a big ass uh, file with lots of if and else's that will comply with those and prompt out uh, messages that if you start to have too many of them, you always have to be checking for sustainability. If you have to maintain all those um, uh, metrics uh, and eventually after two years of growing this code, you have uh, 1 billion uh, SLOs, well, that's not sustainable and you need to uh, keep evolving with them. That's that's also very important. I, I haven't thought of it. It's a very good... Um, comment from you, Henrik, I, you're blowing my mind right now, live, everyone. <laughs> uh, one thing we didn't touch base today, and I think, I don't know if we, we will have the, the, the timing to, to really introduce it and explain it really, really well. If you use SLI and SLO uh, in your production environment, uh, there are two other terms uh, that comes along with it, especially for production. So it's going to be the error rate, uh, the burn rate. Uh, so usually uh, the, the, the error rate is, is um, the error budget, sorry, is uh, something that you look at uh, based on your SLO. So you remember, I, I told you that the SLIs needs to be a ratio and then your SLO will be, say, I my ratio that I have calculated from the indicators, uh, I'll, uh, it needs to be uh, under 90, for example. Um, and the error budget will be say, okay, so I have 100% and you have defined 90, so the difference is 10%. Uh, and we have defined to evaluate those metrics every 10 days. Uh, and so basically we will calculate. So it means uh, 10 days multiply by 24, hour, uh, 24 hours, uh, because 24 hours in a day, multiply by 60 for, for the hour, uh, so basically, you try to figure out the number of minutes. Uh, and then, for example, we remember we mentioned about the, uh, the availability. So let's say I, my system can be 90% uh, available. Uh, so I will have to calculate the error budget, which means how, min how many minutes I tolerate of having that objective failing in production. Uh, so sometimes it's really good to express it, your error budget because you can suddenly uh, see that uh, your SLO is suitable for production. And say, uh, if you say that, oh, uh, I need 99.99.9 .99 availability. <laughs> okay, so if you start calculate that, you suddenly realize that you don't tolerate four minutes per month of outage. And I think that is not super realistic. Four minutes of outage is, if you do it on an upgrade or anything, um, Depends on again. It depends on your in your applications and the way it's it's been deployed in your production environment, and the criticity of your application. But sometimes, if you just express forty minutes of outage during thirty days, okay, I think I can I can I can accept that. <laughs> to be honest, and it's 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 funny because uh, you keep uh, bringing some under some more understanding and blowing my mind with these ideas. Because what you just mentioned is. Uh, you have some SLIs and you generate SLOs over them. And then you need to have a number of errors on those SLOs. Those number of errors, 
becomes an SLI that comes from an SLO and it's like a chicken and the egg and inception with dreams inside of the dreams and we can keep getting deeper and deeper. And, the, and this is really interesting because you can come up uh, with an SLI from a bunch of SLOs and say, I need all these SLOs passing. How many do I have? That number of errors over SLOs becomes an SLI and, and so on. You can keep cycling that and generate like a big indicator. And it's something that I have seen with some customers um, asking, hey, I just want a big light that turns red, orange, yellow, green, depending on what's the health of my system. And generally it's like, uh, well, there are like 15,000 things that I can check for the health of your system, like a human body. We can have all of those uh, blood pressure, sugar, heartbeats, um, how much are you breathing? How can I say you're healthy, you're not? Uh, so those aggregations become a big ass SLO. So it's... So it just it just reminded me that uh, your, the system of your customer, at, at the end, he has a big uh, Christmas, Christmas tree, you know, and you have this, uh, the, all the lights blinking. It says, what is that? I don't forget, forget about it. It's just Christmas. Don't forget. <laughs> is it the health of my system? No, no, no. It's just um, a, a, the board for the DJ on the party that we have downstairs. So it's uh, never, never mind. But uh, I think we are already um, deviating a little, uh, no pun intended. And um, I think to not to make these episodes too long, I think we should uh, leave it there and um, start quitting it with the SLs. Um, they are super interesting. They are super deep. So many things that we can keep goofing around and talking about them. Um, any closing words, Henrik? I would say, uh, yeah, uh, define your objectives. So don't try to do too much complicated. Uh, everything in the IT in general, you need to stop very simple uh, and basically improve yourself uh, step by step. Uh, otherwise, your journey in, in the SLI SLO will be very complicated, and uh, people will basically uh, yeah, will question why you have spent so much time building the systems that nobody is using. So st st keep simple, uh, and you will see. But once you have it, uh, start with your quality gate. I think it's great, and then move on to production because in production you will have a lot of advantages to get to, to, to use SLI, SLI and SLO as well. And I think that on my end, I will play the contrarian a little bit. Uh, I do agree with Henrik. Don't go nuts and complicating your SLs in general, AIOs, but you need to have enough. Uh, don't oversimplify it and five seconds for everything. And no, that, that, that also doesn't work. Like everything, the middle term, having a right balance, not an average, because the averages in general are dangerous. That, uh, uh, I, don't know, I can't remember who said uh, you put a foot on boiling water and another on ice water. On average, you are well, but no, you're you're in a very bad situation. So make sure that you have everything balanced. Uh, it's it's really important, and that um, you have enough metrics that you are paying attention to the ones that matter, and don't overestimate. It's really really important that you pay attention to your SLs, all of them. They are important. And one thing that we we I didn't we touched it based base, uh, very quickly, but uh, keep in mind that it doesn't make sense to start SLI and SLO if you don't even have uh, the right system that collects your indicators and your metrics. So, so make sure that you have the right toolings in place to measure and observe your environments. And once you have that, know your users, know your systems, understand how it's currently behaving, because with this. It will help you to drive and guide the way you're going to structure your requirement. Very important. So uh, with those wise words, I think we call it a day. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to us. Thank you, Amigo Hendrik, for coming and chatting and sharing our knowledge. And uh, OK, adios. See you soon for another episode and for more talk about performance. Okay, thank you everybody, Perfites out. Mm -hmm.